This video is about the steps involved in the protocol for performing complete and comprehensive transthoracic echocardiography, which meets the current standards of American Society of Echo. We will also discuss basic probe position and major structures visible in each echo window. In the end, there will be a summary of the protocol to keep it as a reference in your echo lab. Before you start, ECG leads must be attached to every patient. So let's start with recording the peristernal long axis, with the patient lying in left lateral position. This window is obtained by placing the probe in fourth left intercoastal space with pointer towards right shoulder. First step of the protocol is to record 2D image of peristernal long axis with increased depth so we may not miss the pericardial effusion. In the next step record the same with the normal depth. These are the key structures visible in peristernal long axis view. You can see part of anterior septum, posterior wall, aortic valve, and mitral valve here. Now apply color Doppler separately on mitral valve, aortic valve, and interventricular septum. Now in the next step apply M mode on LV cavity. Then apply M mode on the mitral valve. This is the normal pattern of mitral valve opening and closing. Now apply M mode on the aortic valve and take measurements for the aortic and LA diameter and aortic valve opening. Now from the peristernal long axis move the ultrasound beam towards RV inflow to get the RV inflow view by tilting tail down towards left shoulder directing towards patient's right hip. In RV inflow view we can appreciate anterior and posterior leaflets of tricuspid valve. And this is the only view to visualize posterior leaflet of tricuspid valve. Apply color Doppler on the tricuspid valve. And get continuous wave Doppler through the tricuspid valve. Return back to peristernal long axis and get the RV outflow view by angling beam towards left shoulder that is by moving tail away from the left shoulder. In RV outflow view you can visualize pulmonary valve along with main pulmonary artery. Apply color Doppler on the pulmonary valve. And then continuous wave Doppler through the pulmonary valve. Now it's time to take the LV measurements in diastole. Measure the thickness of septum, posterior wall and LV internal diameter at the level of mitral valve leaflet tip. Now take the same three measurements in systole. Measure proximal RVOT. Zoom aortic valve and measure LVOT and aortic valve annulus. Then measure sinotubular junction, sinuses of Valsalva and ascending aorta. Here we are finished with peristernal long axis. Next major window is peristernal short axis. From peristernal long axis, rotate pointer of the probe towards left shoulder, and then move towards base or apex to get different levels. Now record a peristernal short axis at the level of aortic valve. These are the major structures which we can appreciate in peristernal short axis. You can appreciate all the three cusps of aortic valve here. Apply color Doppler on the aortic valve. Then focus on pulmonary valve and apply color Doppler. And then apply continuous wave on pulmonary valve. In the next step focus on tricuspid valve and record its 2D image. In this view you can appreciate anterior and septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Apply color Doppler on tricuspid valve. And then continuous wave Doppler on the tricuspid valve. Now come to the peristernal short axis at the level of mitral valve by angling ultrasound beam apically towards mitral valve. You can appreciate anterior and posterior mitral leaflets with all the three scallops as you can see starting laterally from A1 to A3 and P1 to P3. It's worth mentioning here that, in peristernal long axis view we can see only A2 and P2, in apical 2 chamber view we can identify P1, A2 and P3. And in apical 4 chamber we can see P1, A2 and A3. Returning back to short axis of mitral valve, next step is to apply color Doppler. Now move ultrasound beam more apically to get peristernal short axis at the mid LV cavity level. Look keenly for any wall motion abnormality here. Now coming to next major window. That is apical window which is obtained best at the apex of the heart. To get the apical four chamber view place the probe at apex and for the pointer position there are two approaches. In the first one, pointer is towards the bed or 3 o'clock position. 
with this orientation left heart will be visualized on the right hand side. In the second approach, pointer will be towards appendix of the patient and the left heart will then be visualized on left hand side. In this video we are using the second one. Record the 2D image of apical 4 chamber view. These are the key structures visible in this view. By moving the ultrasound beam anteriorly we can also visualize aortic valve, making it an apical 5 chamber view. Coming back to 4 chamber view apply color Doppler on mitral valve. And then apply continuous wave at mitral valve. Now apply pulse wave Doppler at mitral valve leaflet tips to get the E and A velocities. Apply TDI at septal mitral annulus and measure E prime. And then TDI at lateral mitral annulus. Apply color Doppler on pulmonary veins. And get pulse wave Doppler of the best visualized pulmonary vein. Next steps involve measurement of LA area, LA volume and similarly measurement of raw area and volume. Details of which will be discussed separately in another video. Now apply color Doppler on tricuspid valve and get continuous wave Doppler of tricuspid valve. Apply M mode on lateral annulus of tricuspid valve for TAPSI for the assessment of right heart function. Apply TDI on lateral annulus of tricuspid valve for measuring S prime. Measure RV area in diastole and systole to get fractional area change. Now coming to apical 3 chamber view. From the apical 4 chamber view, Rotate the probe towards right shoulder to get the apical 3 chamber view. Apply color Doppler on aortic valve. Get continuous wave Doppler through aortic valve. Measure IVRT. It can also be measured from apical 5 chamber view. Here is the diagram to better visualize measurement of IVRT. Apply color Doppler on mitral valve. Then pulse wave Doppler in LVOT and trace the envelope to measure LVOT VTI. Next step is to record apical 2 chamber view which is obtained by rotating the probe further towards left shoulder. Apply color Doppler on mitral valve. Remember this figure for the assessment of wall motion abnormality and the coronary territory involved. Next major window is subcostal. To get subcostal 4 chamber view. Place the probe at epigastrium with patient in supine position, pointer at 3 o'clock, tilt probe anteriorly, and move ultrasound beam in between suprasternal notch and left clavicle. Record its 2D image. This view is particularly helpful for measuring RV thickness and to see atrial septal defect. Apply color on interatrial septum to look for any septal defect. Get pulse wave Doppler on septum to look for any blood flow across septum. To visualize IVC, rotate pointer anticlockwise to about 12 o'clock, then tilt probe superiorly with beam directed through the abdomen. Adjust beam slightly towards IVC that is towards right lateral to get good image. Record the image of IVC and hepatic veins. Apply color Doppler. Get pulse wave Doppler on hepatic veins. Apply M mode on IVC to measure and check for collapsibility of IVC. Visualize the aorta by angling the beam towards left side that is left lateral, and record abdominal aorta. Apply color Doppler on abdominal aorta. Apply pulse wave Doppler on abdominal aorta. Now coming to suprasternal window which is obtained by placing the probe at suprasternal notch with patient in supine position, and pointer towards chin. It is best to visualize the arch of aorta. Apply color Doppler on arch and descending aorta. Apply continuous wave Doppler on descending aorta. And pulse wave Doppler on the descending aorta. Similarly apply color Doppler on ascending aorta. Then continuous wave Doppler on ascending aorta. And pulse wave Doppler on ascending aorta. We are done with all the steps. In next few slides. Summary of full protocol is given to keep it as a reference. Hope you have enjoyed learning basic echo protocol. If you have any queries let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.